Hi guys, Mike here and today we're going to talk about this, the ASUS N56 and this is the video review for ASUS's new multimedia laptop that they're bringing on the market right now in 2012. This brings uh, the new body, a new exterior, improved hardware and a couple of extras, for instance an HD, a full HD display and an illuminated keyboard. But more about this laptop and its abilities in the video review that's gonna start in just a second. And don't forget, a thumbs up, it's gonna help us a lot. Thanks. All right, we're going to start with a quick look at the exterior. We have here the ASUS N56, a 15.6 inch laptop. And you can see that it's, uh, it's pretty thick, it's pretty heavy. It's not really a laptop you're going to easily carry around. Uh, on top on the lid you have aluminum and it's looking quite good it's uh, some dark brown color with a slight texture it feels all right it doesn't bend that much in the middle and uh, over here in the middle there is the asus logo carved and this one is going to be backlit like on the um, macbook uh, laptops uh, when uh, when you're going to power the device now on the bottom you have plastic and it's just regular plastic it feels good it's made and it will be quite solid and over here you have uh, this uh, big panel it's only one screw holding it together and you're going to access the hard drive and the memory and also here on the back there is the battery now having a quick look on the sides let's see what we get here first of all uh, in this part there is this small adapter for the subwoofer we're going to talk about it a little bit later next week there is the v uh, VGA output a big cooling grid over here LAN adapter HDMI HDMI sorry and two USB 3.0 slots on the front you have the card reader it's over here you also have the status LEDs here on the front and it's good that uh, uh, the lights aren't really that uh, that strong so there won't be an inconvenience when holding the device on your uh, desk and on this other side you have the headphone output you have the microphone you have another two USB 3.0 slots so four in total you have the optical unit which for our unit is the blu-ray disc you have the uh, DC in and a Kensington lock here on the back and uh, on this part there's actually nothing you have the screens hinges and part of the battery over here now the hinges aren't really that big but they're solid enough and they will be able to hold the screen in place when you're going to open the device now opening the device We're going to take a quick look at the keyboard and the trackpad. But first, let's talk about the interior. And uh, we have uh, aluminum over here. This part is aluminum, it's brushed, it's filled, it feels very good. Uh, and uh, there are these tiny holes here. Uh, let me zoom in a bit so you will be able to see those holes. Alright, so that's how this, uh, this device looks. Uh, those uh, tiny holes are drilled with lasers and uh, overall the design is very good. Of course, uh, behind those, uh, those holes are the speakers, one on each side of the laptop, but uh, they're also part of the design, so they have an aesthetic feeling. Now, speaking about the keyboard, this is a backlit keyboard, so it will be quite okay. Uh, the keys are properly spaced, uh, they feel very nice, and uh, there's plenty of travel on each of these keys, as you can see here. I'd say the feedback is very good and there's little to no flex. Even the space is actually good as well. One thing that I don't really like is the fact that these keys, the arrow keys over here, they're a little bit smaller. You can see that they're not properly sized, they're not as big as the keys over here. They're slightly narrower and because of that and because of their, the fact that they're not uh, uh, individualized from the keyboard, from the keys around them, they will be a little bit difficult to, to find unless you're, you're watching them. One more thing, the keyboard is backlit and I'm going to show more details about that in just a couple of seconds. But let's have a quick look at the trackpad. You can see that it's a massive trackpad over here, plenty of space. Um, it comes with this smooth 
surface and it's actually accurate it's a clickable trackpad but uh, i'm not going to be very comfortable pressing it over here you're still going to have to click on the sides in order to register clicks and it's uh, the click buttons are not that stiff and overall this works quite good it's accurate and it will work with multi-touch gestures as well back to the keyboard i was telling you that it is backlit and you can adjust uh, the backlight uh, leveling and uh, this is how it's going to look when it's turned down and you have three different levels and uh, overall i would say that the backlighting is all right although you still have a little bit of bleeding you can see under the keys but uh, if you're going to watch this from the top uh, the backlighting is actually working quite good so uh, it's actually better than on other asus devices i've seen in a while uh, okay now let's have a quick look at the screen and let's see what we're getting here the n56 has a 15.6 inch screen it comes with a mate finish and full hd resolution so this is 1912 uh, 1920 by 1080 and uh, it's a tn panel but the viewing angles are very very good you can see that i'm leaning the device towards the back and towards the front and still the viewing angles are good despite uh, the fact that this is a darker image if you're going to have a whiter image a brighter image uh, you're going to see even less issues with uh, with uh, the viewing angles also an increased color gamut so overall the colors will be quite uh, nicely represented on this device now uh, let's talk about the hardware first of all this is built on an intel ivy bridge platform our test unit comes uh, with the quad core core i7 processor let me double check this so there is a quad core uh, core i7 3610qm processor clocked at 2.3 gigahertz 6 gigabyte of ram windows 7 professional on, on 64 bit and there is the nvidia 630m uh, graphics now this is not really nvidia kepler is the previous uh, nvidia 540 uh, reiterated here but it's still a decent uh, mainstream uh, graphics card that will be able to push, th push this through multimedia content and even some games and uh, talking about multimedia content well we have a couple of clips here and I'm going to open media player classic and uh, going to try I don't know let me this is a 720p mp4 file but that's not really what I want to show you I want to show you the 7 uh, the 1080p mkv and um, I'm going to notice that this one will be working even though we don't have the XVA, so the XVA is not activated and still the clip is working. A little bit of lag because we don't have the XVA, but overall the clip is working and once again you get the chance to see the viewing angles. I would say they're actually quite good and the colors quite nice as well. Uh, of course this one can play all sorts of uh, streamed content from, I don't know, Netflix HD, Ulu, Ulu HD and of course from YouTube I can't really show you anything because here in Romania we don't have this uh, but uh, I can show you YouTube and let's go ahead on YouTube and in the meantime I'm going to load the site which is mikesquarter.com and I'm going to show you how you can use the the trackpad for all kinds of gestures right now I'm two fingers scrolling and you can see that everything is moving so smoothly and of course this is two fingers zooming and uh, once again very 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 smooth so nothing to say wrong about this back on YouTube let's find the bunny clip should have the bunny clip around here somewhere okay I don't know which one is it I think it's this one. Ten eighty P. And you can see that it's working, everything looks very good. And it's uh, this is ten eighty P flash from YouTube. Okay. 
right now I'm also going to show you a couple of games I only have just a few games installed and for more details on performances you should see the written review there are some benchmarks I'm going to present them on the site on mikesquarter.com but let's uh, let's look at the games Black Ops we have here Call of Duty Black Ops and uh, it's running on full HD resolution however we don't have uh, all the details set towards maximum and uh, we have a decent amount of frames per second around 50 which is actually quite uh, quite good I'd say and you can see that the game is playing fairly nice and of course you can increase the details if you want to this is not uh, a 3d screen but uh, full HD and uh, able to play this that's actually quite uh, good I'd say of course Call of Duty is not really the latest title probably Battlefield on Battlefield you might not be able to run the game with uh, the highest details possible um, on full HD resolution but you can uh, trim the details and you can lower the resolution you're still going to be able to play games on this uh, device with the uh, Nvidia 630M graphics and also there is a version with an Nvidia 650 which is faster twice as fast as this one and should be the better pick if you're looking to um, if you're looking to get uh, some games on a device like this one the second game we're having here is Dirt 3 and we're also again on full HD resolutions with details set towards a minimum uh, actually towards medium so they're not towards minimum and we have an average of 30 frames per second which is actually decent and uh, you can see that uh, the game is uh, is playable once again this is not one of the latest titles but it's still a pretty demanding game here so that was dirt 3 and uh, you should also hear the sound in action but uh, more about the sound in the next part of the clip and don't forget if you want more details on benchmarks and performances of this laptop go ahead on the site on mikesquarter.com and uh, there is a link in the description below towards the written review where all these details will be included and now let's talk about the sound system what the Asus N56 series has over all the other laptops available right now on the market are very good speakers they have bigger speakers here on the laptop one of each on each side with bigger chambers so they should be quite more powerful they also have this an external subwoofer and the entire sound system is made together with uh, bang and all of some so should be quite good the subwoofer it's, it's external and you're going to have to connect it to the computer with this small uh, 2.5 millimeter jack there is the connector over here on the back and um, let's go ahead and listen to some songs with this connector <laughs> adjusted the volume a little bit so you can hear the quality let's try something else see if you can spot this one and now I'm going to turn the sound volume a little bit higher and there is actually a big difference when disconnecting this Or connecting it back and that's because uh, when uh, disconnecting it the speakers take care of all the sound frequencies while when connecting it uh, the low frequency sounds is outputted towards the uh, the subwoofer while this the chambers all only take care uh, take care of the medium or higher frequency sound and uh, besides this uh, SUS actually bundles this with this application sorry for the colors they're a little bit skewed on this registration 
So um, we have this application that will allow you to actually You can increase things here and adjust the sound quality so it will fit to your needs. So it's called Max Audio 3. It's actually a very good application for uh, tweaking out sound on a laptop like this. A couple of more things we should talk about. First of all, this device does tend to get quite hot, especially around this area. So this part here on the left of the trackpad gets hot when you're going to play some games for a longer period of time. And there will be a lot of hot air coming out from the left side as well. Um, I don't know if that's going to be a very big inconvenience to you. Personally, I wouldn't advise getting laptops that get very hot. But the good part is that on average daily use, this one will not get hot. Only if you're going to use it for games. And uh, probably the more powerful version, the one with the NVIDIA 650M, will get even hotter. For the temperatures, go ahead, check the written review, there are some details about those over there. Now, in terms of battery life, you should expect around 3.5 hours of average use for this laptop. And uh, it might get a little bit uh, lower or higher based on what you're going to do. Basically, this is not really a laptop you're going to carry around, that's the idea. And for that, around 3-3.5 three, three hours of life is actually decent, I'd say. The final thing we should talk about are prices. This one will go from between 800 to maybe $1,000 in the US, will be available in stores very soon, and there will be a bunch of different configurations. The Core i7 Ivy Bridge version, this one, but with an NVIDIA 650M, will probably go for around uh, 1000 bucks. while there will be cheaper ones with uh, Core i5 uh, dual-core processors, and even some with dual-core Sandy Bridge uh, CPUs inside that will go for 800 and maybe a little bit less. So it's not really a very cheap laptop, but uh, for what you're getting, I'd say it's a pretty solid price. All right, so this pretty much wraps up our video review for the Asus uh, N56. Uh, you saw that this is a very good laptop, there are plenty of things to like about it, for instance the mate screen, full HD resolution, the very comfortable keyboard and trackpad, the overall body construction quality uh, and uh, of course the performances. One more thing, it has an external subwoofer and uh, very good speakers, so overall in terms of audio quality this is probably one of the best laptops out there. But uh, if uh, you're looking at its uh, downsides, probably you're probably not going to like the fact that it can get hot here on top and a little bit noisy, especially when pushed when trying to play games. And uh, one more thing, it's going to be a little bit expensive, probably around the $1,000 mark for the proper configuration. Some will be cheaper, but uh, overall this is not going to be a cheap laptop. So if you want a truly powerful multimedia device, the ASUS N56 is probably a device you should consider. Otherwise, there are other picks on the market. Alright, that's it with our video review. Don't forget, the written review is uh, in the description below. There is a link. Go ahead and uh, have a look at it. There are some ex extra details in there. The site is maxquarter.com. And don't forget, a thumbs up, it's gonna help us a lot. Thanks.